I have an okay. answer. I will tell you what I have done through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tantrums in a classroom. Thing about tantrums, I think of a tantrum like a roller coaster where you do have this on ramping period, tick, 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 up you go, right? And you could, you have not tipped fully over into the whole thing. Sometimes people talk about tantrums as like all toddler behavior that's unpleasant, but we're talking mm -hmm. about like the moment where you see them leave behind their eyes and they are now tumbling, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what I describe as a tantrum. Like once you've gone over this roller coaster ride and you're down, this ride now has to complete itself because what's happened is that you, they have fled to the back brain, essentially. Like their prefrontal cortex is pretty smooth anyways. Like they don't have a ton of executive functions capacities up there in the front, but like this front part of our brain is where we make all of our choices and where we regulate our emotions and where we're able to like cope with difficulty. So when something happens that makes us feel like we are like deeply threatened, we launch back into this dumb back part of the brain, which tries to keep us super alive. Its whole job is to be like, surviving, survival. And we get trapped down there until we go through like a regulation process. So that, it, and, and then we regulate and are able to kind of travel back up to this top front part of the brain, think a little bit more logically about it, process our experience, put that memory where it belongs and, and build some skills. And that's kind of the whole cycle that your toddler is practicing right now, but these are the first times. So they can't get from that back brain to that front brain. So to me, a tantrum, once we've tipped over and we're on it, I think about it as like a purely physical cycle. Like, okay, I have no idea how long this ride is. Um, and you can't be reasoned with, you can't be taught. And you can't really be, in my opinion, like loved out of it. So yeah, we do see a lot of these sort of mini therapy sessions on the internet right now about like, I see that you're this, I'm here with you, I love you. Like there's a lot of in it. To me, I'm like, this is, um, this like physical response from this child is being allowed to take over 25 minutes of mom's time. And if I'm a two-year-old, what that tells me is anytime something is happening that I don't like, I can fuck up her life for the next 20 minutes if she's gonna <laughs> sit here on the floor and talk to me. And I think that's too powerful. I think that's too much. So my ideal for a tantrum is first that we exit on the way up. Like if I, before we tip over and they're in that backspace, if I can do something a little weird to surprise or distract them, if I can engage them in like, let's have you make a choice about this. Yes, we are doing the thing you don't want. Would you like to choose one of these two things? You know, if I can get them out in that space, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling out all the tricks in the book. I'm standing on a table to get everybody's attention. You know, like I'll, I'll do, I'll do something to try and get us not into a tantrum. <laughs> I think that's okay. I think your child has a lot of opportunities to go through this emotional process. And if we can bail on a tantrum early, like let's do it. But once we're in this tumble cycle and there's the yelling, I mostly let that take care of itself. I think my job is to be visibly on hand somewhere that they can see me and they can hear the sound of my really calm voice because my job is to be on the outside of their feelings, basically uh, telling them like, yeah, that's just a feeling because on the inside, it feels like the world is exploding, right? Like they really feel, and we all still get once in a while into these absolute emotional takeovers and it feels like it's everything. But for a toddler, I just want to show them like, I'm out here. I'm not joining you in your feeling. I've looked and seen that this is not the end of the world. You totally are upset about a thing like, yes, but this is an explosion and I'm not coming down into your explosion with you. I am here to help you anytime you need it. So like very practically, I'm within 15, 20 feet of them doing my own thing, maybe every two or three minutes using my like really clear, calm voice to say like, hey, buddy, I see you. Would you like a little sip of water? I'd love to snuggle you if you're ready. And then they yell more or they throw a thing and I say, okay, I'll check in with you in a minute. And then I keep going about my life because I'm using my position as like the one that they're referencing to find out if we're okay to just basically inside say like, yeah, we're super okay. I'm not coming down there with you. Like your freak out is not my freak out. We're separate in this moment, but I'm totally here for you. So I'm pretty quiet. Most of the time I'm checking in with them kind of frequently, but like two minutes is a long time of yelling, you know, like I'm, I'm giving them some space to like have the whatever. And then mostly I'm just trying to treat a physical need to like invite them out of the tantrum. Usually it's like when there's a, one of those big long in breaths, cause they've been yelling long enough. I will take that opportunity to say, wow, if I was yelling like that, my throat would hurt. Would you like some nice cool water and scoot a water bottle toward them? And then they'll take it or they won't. For me, an important part of a tantrum is the circle back at the end 
whenever the tantrum is over, I am full, full it's full restoration for me because they just went through something fucking weird inside their body, you know? So like, we're going to get full regulation. If you want to get squeezed down your little arms, if you want to get hugged, if you want to like breathe, you don't get the thing that you were tantruming about, but right. we take good care of your body and we make sure that you're nice and cozy. And a, when we're clear again, between us and I can see that you're right behind your eyes again and we're all feeling calm, then we can circle back and we can talk about a better strategy for the thing at the beginning. I can say, I know you wanted this thing. I would have loved to help you with that. Next time, ask me in this way and we'll see what we can do or whatever the instruction that you'd like to give. What I want is for them to be dropping tools that are unsuccessful, like hitting, hurting, tantruming. I want those to not work for them well and be building up an arsenal of good tools that are functional. You can always ask me in this way. You can always try it like this. You can always touch with gentle hands. This is what I want you to do instead. Yeah. And that's how we see tantrums leave a little bit more quickly is because they have something to do. So it starts to feel a lot less freak out every time they don't get what they want or they bump into frustration because we're on the other side also building up some better tools for them. 